Oh, hi. It's Basic Folk, where we have honest conversations with folk musicians. I'm Cindy Howes, and I am the host. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're well. The world is crazy. Music is great. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of great new music, and I promised last week that I would send out a newsletter with my favorite records from February, and I didn't do it. Not because I didn't want to. I have my list ready to go, uh, but maybe I'll try to get to that this weekend. And if you'd like to see what I've been listening to, you can sign up for my mailing list, cindyhouse.net. And there's also a Facebook group I will post on, Basic Folk Basics. We still have, we still has this knit hats for sale, Basic Folk beanies. Um, they are still available. So you can check them out on my website, cindyhouse.net. Today on the podcast, very excited to welcome back our first repeat guest, Nora Jane Struthers, who was on the fourth ever episode of Basic Folk. For this time around, we're going to go track by track on her new album, which just came out, Bright Lights, Long Drives, First Words, one of my favorites that was released in February. The record was recorded while she was eight months pregnant after a long struggle with infertility, which she talks all about on episode four of Basic Folk. She tells the whole incredible story. This album addresses the dichotomy between realizing this hard-earned dream and also the actual reality of keeping her career alive, going on the road and everything like that, in the wake of becoming a new mom. There are songs about finding home in your family, being too far away from your friends, and the song that Nora Jane claims is the best song she's ever wrote. On this episode, she's kind enough to go through the album song by song and address different themes and different styles. My favorite song on the album is an amazing track called To Catch a Phoenix, which is super dramatic, very Game of Thrones, Hunger Games, Harry Potter. So Nora Jane is so smart and so well-spoken, and she's also very funny, in, and she has a very dry sense of humor in a way that sometimes I'm like, are you being serious? And I'm like, no, she's just joking. And it's she's very funny when she's like breaking down the metaphor of how you catch a phoenix line by line, like very straight face. And I'm sitting there like listening to her with my jaw on the floor. It's like very cool. Please enjoy this track by track on Basic Folk for Nora Jane Struthers and her new album, Bright Lights, Long Drives, First Words on Basic Folk. Nora Jane Struthers, thanks for being here. The new album, Bright Lights, Long Drives, First Words. And we're doing something different on the episode today because you have been on Basic Folk before. One of the very first guests that we had on. Woo! And it was a very fun interview and we learned so much about you. But I want to talk specifically about this album today and do like a, a track by track and get some background information. Uh, it's a great record. Thank you. And I have like some specific questions about what was going on at the time with you. But if there's anything that you might have been listening to or watching or reading when you were writing these songs that might have crept in as an mm. influence. That's such an interesting question. I um, So yeah, I wrote the record um, really between January and September of 2018. And then we, re- we recorded it in November. So I wrote the songs over like a nine month period. I don't know. I To be honest with you, Cindy, I really like don't, when I'm when I'm writing, I don't listen to a lot of music um for this this is so lame but it's the truth for like the second half of the months when i was writing these songs i was listening to the harry potter audiobooks narr- oh they're so good narrated by the one and only jim dale oh my god because i was pregnant and i was like trying i like i specifically didn't want to be taking in like media or entertainment that would like raise my adrenaline levels Mm. Um, because I thought that would be like negative, that would negatively impact my fetus. Mm -hmm. Um, because I've read things about that, how if you are like pregnant and in a war torn country, 
all the adrenaline spikes will like cause your baby to, to have like really strong limbs and like less like less of the less of the growth will go to their brain because <laughs> they're like born like more ready to like is that crazy that is I know it sounds like it's not true but it's true you can look it up wow um, anyway so uh, yeah uh, a lot of Harry Potter but I don't I don't really feel like that crept its way into my mm. songwriting but fun fact yes more of a fun fact the last time we we spoke, you were pregnant, mm. and that was very exciting mm-hmm. because you had had many infertility issues, and it was always a dream of yours to have a family. Um, you recorded the album while eight months pregnant, and I found this this great quote where you're talking about like I really recommend <laughs> being eight months pregnant while you make a record. Yeah, no, I think it was a great experience. I think um, there's a lot about pregnancy that is humbling, and uh, and for someone like me who maybe. <laughs> sort of drives in the lane of control freak a little bit. I mean, I'm not I'm not a control freak, but I'm definitely very comfortable being in control. Mm. Um, and I can also relinquish control when appropriate, mm-hmm. you know? That's good. Yeah. But, yeah, so I think, but being pregnant, like, you just, you have no control over anything. And so, for me, it was a real paradigm shift, and it sort of, it, that uh, experience, it really invaded all spaces of my life. And so, in the studio, I was just like, you know, just kind of letting everything be what it was. And that was really, that was really fun for me. You know, in a, it was really fun to just like let it happen and, and be witness to it. And then you started this garden, which I want to hear about where you did all this research and you're trying to take your mind off of things. Mm. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, some of it was about, yeah. Some of it was about having a project. I think, um, you know, my, so my mom's, Dad, my grand, my my maternal grandfather, uh, was a farmer and a, and he also ran a fertilizer company, like a bone bone meal fertilizer company in Pennsylvania, and so part of my identity has always been that like we come from farmers, like I I feel connected to the land sort of vicariously through that family connection, and I and I was thinking about you know how if we are about to have our own child, which we were you know we had the embryo transfer scheduled for April. So this is like in January and February, I'm planning this garden and and I'm thinking like, you know, if I, if we don't have a garden, then it's, it's not going to be enough for like her to have her great grandfather who she's never met. And you know what I mean? Who who she'll Mm -hmm. never meet. Just like, I wanted her to have more of a connection to the land because I feel like it, it is so grounding and rooting. And, um, so there was that. And then there was also just that I like wanted to get into really good shape and I don't like going to a gym or exercising in a traditional sense anymore. Like I lived in New York and I used to do the whole gym and like, you know, I used to run every morning and I don't know. It's just so intense. And like the whole gym thing, like it's great. If you love doing it, that's great. I, I associate that, that thing with being stressed out since I was like really stressed out when I was living in New York and I would go to the gym to like relieve the stress. So I have this like sort of counterintuitive pairing of stress and working out. If that makes any sense. Yes. So. <laughs> it's like a job. It's not fun. Right. So instead, my, you know, the way I prefer to get my exercise now is by like building things and like being able to see at the end of it, like the fruits of my labor. So yeah, I wanted to get into like, I wanted to get into good shape before we did the embryo transfer so that I could be really strong for pregnancy. And um, that like, yeah, it took us a whole month to build this garden. It's 21 raised beds. We built a drip line irrigation system. It's like, a, it's a whole thing. You could water the garden on your phone yeah while you're on tour yes it's amazing that's mind-blowing it's mind-blowing and it's and it's fantastic because otherwise i mean if you, if you ever if you grow anything you know that like the most time consuming thing is the watering like it takes no time to put a seed in the ground right but like you have to water it twice a day every day Let's get into this record. It starts off with a song that you're like, it's a really good driving song, so I'm going to start this one off. It's called Nice to Be Back Home. 
And from first listen, it's as, it sounds like, um, you know, you're getting into it and it's like, oh, you like to be home, like in your house. But then the next verse seems to be about like someone who travels a lot, but still finds that sense of home. And then the sense of home is in the next verse is actually in your partner. Mm -hmm. From here, I've got so many notes about this song, actually. You had a quote. I'd love to not sound like a Hallmark card here, but I fear it's unavoidable. Home is not a place, it's a feeling. My husband and now our daughter are my home. Yeah. Did I get it right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's totally true. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, there is something about really, like, walking into your, your physical home and the, the feeling of that, but it's really special to be able to do what I do and travel around the country and um, travel anywhere and and, you know, at the end of the day, just, like, collapse into the into the arms of my loved ones and feel like okay here we are nice to be back home <laughs> I feel like my old self Self. That's the next one. It's the second best song on the record. Is that why it's the second song? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. That might be why it's the second song. It sounds like the, s the clouds are parting, mm -hmm. coming out of a haze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wrote, as I said, I wrote these songs in 2018, and 2017 was a really hard year for me. We were dealing, dealing with all this infertility um, and trying, trying to overcome it in sort of more, uh, more non-traditional ways, like not using... Um, Western medicine, we were doing some Eastern medicine, we were doing some acupuncture, and it really seemed, I mean, I, I still believe that all of that stuff could have worked, it just it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so there was that, and then there was also, like, I had a whole business plan, I had this whole thing set up, I had a new record, I had a team I thought that was, like, just about to come together, I had a record label that was about to sign me, I had a manager that was about to sign me, and then everything, like, totally fell apart. So yeah, 2017 was a tough year, and I just, like, whew, at the end of it, I felt like I really had my ass kicked. And so then 2018 came, and it was something about just, like, having the clean slate of the new year. And, uh, yeah, I wrote this I wrote this song on, like, July. I mean, on January... I think this was really... I think it was January 4th. There's really something to be said about taking that moment, you know, because when, when you're in that dark period of time it feels a lot of times like this is just how life is going to be now life is hard mm -hmm. I feel like the heaviness is going to be on me every day but then when the clouds part and you start feeling like your old self again it's sometimes uh, hard to even recognize that things are better now mm. do you know what I mean mm. this is coming from a place of like practicing meditation mm -hmm. or um, just trying to get through a dark time where you're acknowledging that there is like there is like a blue sky past those clouds yeah do you take time to to do that during those dark times or are you just like this is the way it's gonna be oh I'm oh man I mean I like very much when I'm when I'm in any kind of you know darker period like that it's really hard for me to see past the clouds mm. but the things the things that I do are like I like make sure to like get outside and like walk around under the you know in the air mm -hmm. and like move myself forward through time and space with my own body mm -hmm. that always like you know that kind of like is a, is a weak substitute for control and uh but <laughs> <laughs> but helpful nonetheless well it's like you gotta do something yeah right? <laughs> yeah yeah and then I think you know also my, my partner Joe is just like he's always Booing. I never know how to say that right. You know what I'm saying, right? I think that's the right way to say. Yeah, it. and um, and like has just a, you know he can he can put anything in perspective. So that's, that's very helpful. Very helpful. I feel like my
she wanted a brown paper bag. The Turnpike. New Jersey? Jersey. Okay, tell me about this song. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, so I grew up in Jersey, and um, I live in Nashville. I've been in Nashville for 11 years, and mo- I have a really great group of friends from high school. They're, those are, That's like my, those are my old friends. I didn't, I did not sustain a group of friends after college. Uh, I went to NYU, and I just like, it was just hard to find and build community there. I think it was such a big school. Um, but yeah, I've gr- got great friends from high school, and um, I'm like, pretty bummed that I'm like missing out on raising my kid in that community because I just love those people so much Mm. Um, and I also just like love New Jersey so much but I also I've been living in the south and I'm like soft now you know Mm -hmm. what I mean I like I don't want to live softer than a Care Bear yeah I'm exactly I I, I am I'm too soft I'm too soft I mean I, I can like navigate Jersey really well and I like love going back I love the culture I love the like funny gruff friendliness of the northeast you know um, but I, I also like just, it's a lot easier to be in the, in the soft friendliness of the South. Right. Yeah. You do make a lot of, um, references to how kind of like hard edged people in New Jersey are. Yeah. And you miss that. I do. I like, I like how like, just like open book people are, you know, in the North. I like, I really like that. We're three songs into the record. And we come upon, like, the first kind of slower mm. song. Um, and it's it's the first very clear, like, duet between you and Joe on the album, which he's been on the other songs, but this is, like, definitely the two of you singing. It's the first acoustic song. The sequence of the album is, is interesting to me, like, in general, like mm. how people decide what songs to put where. Um, You have three very strong rock songs and then this lovely song um, with you and your husband. Yeah, this is the best song on the record, in case you were wondering. (laughs) Maybe the best song I've ever written. It's called A Good Thing. That's it, right? That's the next song? A Good Thing. Okay, yes. Great. Yeah, I think this might be the best song I've ever written. I don't know. I know a good thing when it comes around. I feel fine fortune. When it's staring me down If I could hold here In this moment and stay Would I be contented If life never changed Yeah, it's just about that, you know, when you've, when you've moved through the hard part of life and you're like in a moment where everything is actually pretty damn good the bitter sweetness of knowing that it can't stay that way. On the one hand, I think it's like so great because you're able to just like really savor how beautiful different moments in life can be. But also, of course, it's hard because you know that it's going to go away. Mm. Yeah. Why do you think this is the best song you've ever written? Just the reaction I get from people when I play it live. People always ask for, like, before the record came out, we were playing this song for like six months live, and people would say, Where is that song? I want that one. It's a good song. You can't have it yet. You can't have it. Yeah. A good thing's too good to stay here. Climb is the next one. A song about working towards something the right way, slowly. Mm. As someone who has, who enjoys having control, mm. how do you feel about that process? Oh, it's a pain in the ass, man. No. I, <laughs> I wish, um, yeah, it would be nice if things didn't have to be so slow. But they, that's just the experience of that I have in my life is that, you know, it really, it, it, it is a pain, but honestly, it's so much better because... I think about how, like, like I put out a record in 2015, and like I don't know how I got it into my, I got it into my head. My drummer and I both, maybe the whole band and, and I, got it into our heads that we were gonna like break. You know, we were gonna get like big off this record. This was gonna be the record. Um, we got it. We got like a big booking agent. You know, we just we were feeling like this is it, man. Mm. And um, and I think about it, you know, now and oh my gosh, thank goodness that wasn't the record that like made us big because we were. I don't know. We're just not ready 
to handle anything like that. So, mm. um, uh, but just in case you're wondering, we're ready now. Ready now. <laughs> yeah, we're ready now. Um, no, but I think, yeah, I think that getting, like, building something from the ground up and building it yourself is a great way to go through life. And it's funny, because I re- when I wrote the song, I was really feeling like it was more of a, like, secular gospel. I, I was feeling, like, bluegrassy about it, mm-hmm. you know, because I come from, like, a bluegrass background. Mm-hmm. And I was like, my band's never going to play this, but I, I have the philosophy that if I start writing a song, I need to finish writing it just to, like, get it out so I can move on to the next one, mm-hmm. you know? And I was like, I'm just going to finish it. And, like, my ba- like, I thought it was good. It was not that I thought it was bad. I just didn't think that we would play it. So in that way, it's, like, a little useless, you know? And, uh, and then I, like, sent it to my bandmates, and they were like, no, this is going to be sweet. Like, we just need to, we just need to, like, change the feel. And I was like, okay, right on. That's great. Yeah. It's so fun. waltz and it has it seems like a very important song because it has the title track in it bright lights long drives first words and correct me if i'm wrong it seems to be a song about you wanting both you want it all you want family you want a career Mm -hmm. i was trying to think about this i wanted to know about your experience if you had anything like specific in your life where somebody told you that you couldn't have both Oh, I mean, I just, I think it's just a societal expectation that, um... Yeah, it seems like not even something that's, like, overt. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 well, and, and also just realistically, like, I think it, it's, I think it's challenging to, to have a career and a family. I think that everybody who does it agrees that it's challenging. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, of course, the burden is, like, and, and I don't, burden is not maybe the right word, but, the, the well, yeah, the burden of the choice is so often, like, put on the mother Mm -hmm. um if only if only because she may or may not be nursing and like the amount of time that that takes away from uh, the the way that that requires you to be physically present is different than for a father i feel like so far we've been able to balance balance i don't know I'm, i'm like hesitant to use the word balance to just do both and uh yeah, I mean, I guess there's some pretty good balance. I'm really, I mean, I'm really lucky. My husband is in my band, and, you know, he's, not only is he, like, just the best human ever, he gives me so much space to do what I need to do, so. Mm-hmm. Is the baby on the road? Oh, yeah, we bring her with us. Yeah. How old is she now? She's 14 months, and she's the cutest. I love all the um, the, the pictures and videos you put on Instagram mm-hmm. where, like, you and Joe are being, like, so adorable and cute, and she's just sort of, like... Hard, she kind of like hardly knows that she's alive <laughs> but it's like a, a, a cute confusion I like it I want it all. all right the next song to catch a phoenix like wow this is a really powerful song Fire. Death Valley, there's one way to catch a phoenix. You have to put out your heart and leave it on the ground. And then you're like talking about like, can't stitch it up. You just got to leave it out there and hope that you're strong enough. Um, So this song seems like a different type of writing for you. Like it's kind of zoomed in on the poetic telling of pain. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely the, the, the lyrical style is is way different than anything else on the record. I feel like strangely self conscious about it. We almost didn't put it on there. We this is one of two songs that we really sort of worked up in the studio um, with the band. Everything else we were, like played out on the road and got really comfortable with. And 
Um, I sort of threw this one in last minute. Um, and it's definitely like, you know, it's kind of like Gabriel Garcia marquez -y. It's like a little magical realism going on with like, it's like a quest. Um, this is where the Harry Potter came through. This is where the Harry Potter came through. There it is. Because I was thinking like it would be a good, I was writing like, trying to think of like a good movie that would be good for it and I thought like Hunger Games uh, would be good like something that's like very like passionate where the protagonist uh -huh. is sort of like cutting off emotions. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that must be it. I really have had Gabriel Garcia Marquez in my head the whole time but like no, it's totally Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So about this song and I I think I might I I got the lyrics to the record late so I think I might be missing the part do you ever catch the phoenix in the song? Uh, it's 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 open ended. You may or may not catch the phoenix. Um, actually, no. I think in the song, no. It's it is open ended. But I think in the song, um, the phoenix like, no. I think the phoenix gets away, but but what it leaves behind is like the your, it eats your heart, right? So the, the way the way you do it okay. is you cut out your heart, okay, and you got to be in Death Valley and like you know in the salt, you know the yeah. salt pan situation. All right, you cut out your heart and you leave it on the ground and, and you hope like it's still beating and you hope it's beating loud enough for the phoenix to come and like to, to hear you. Mm -hmm. And if it comes, it might not choose you. And if it doesn't choose you, it just flies away. Oh no, so it does. It does choose you. So, but if it does choose you, it eats your heart and leaves behind the little glowing heart seed, right? And then you have to put the heart seed, it flies away after it eats your heart It puts your heart seed back in your chest and you, and then you have to sew it up. And like, if you're lucky, like a, a flame will ignite and then you will like get to grow a new heart and it's all you know it's about it's about how you have to just, if you want something you have to go this go is, for it this is some sci-fi yeah fantasy stuff gotta go for it one more question why death valley is that where the phoenix well right? just because the word death really just like you know the idea that like through through death is rebirth it's a great song mm. it's very goth thank you this next song you can go to hot topic and listen to it totally <laughs> To catch a phoenix playing in a mall near you. <laughs> <laughs> The Hunger, this next song I thought was so metal. Like mm. the lyrics, I've been hungry since I rode into town. And then the line that I was like, that's so metal. No one here likes staring into starving eyes. Pull off your face, put on this disguise. Uh huh. Metal. It's, a, it's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. It's not like you're not literal. No, that one's a metaphor. Also, the Phoenix thing is a metaphor, too, in case that wasn't clear. Okay. That's not a real thing. <laughs> Cindy. Okay. That's not real. You can't was, really go to Death Valley and tear well, out your heart. I was about to book a, a <laughs> plane ticket there. Um, okay, so this song, The Hunger, about keeping your passion while remaining a normal human. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, so The Hunger, um, really, it started out, or uh, like the, the, the inspiration for the song was just about my experience in Nashville as a woman. And I feel like you know, you can sort of take this with a grain of salt. You can listen to this however you want to listen to this. But my experience has, has been that I have felt sort of put aside by, like, the the men in the music industry there, um, mostly because I think that the fact that I'm ambitious and I have plans and I can, like, execute those plans is a little bit distasteful because I'm a woman. Mm. Um, to, to people, I think that... A lot of these, um, like music row business men types, would be uh, happier or more excited about helping me if I were a bit more lost in the woods um, and more of a damsel in distress and like need, you know, mm. um, that they could like swoop down and save. Um, that to me, that I've you know, women deal with that kind of thing. Mm. That to me is just like so annoying because you have so much you want to get done it's so annoying 
Yeah, I didn't really realize it. Um, I, I didn't realize that this was a thing until I had a meeting with a, a woman who was an A&R rep of a record label. And this is I, earlier I mentioned that I had a, a label that was ready to sign me and it ended up falling through. And that was that was to no fault of, of hers. Um, it was like a whole structural thing. The label ended up being sold and they stopped signing everybody. So anyway, but uh, I had a meeting with her over lunch and like halfway through the lunch, I was like, man, this is really easy. Like, why is this so different than any meeting I've ever had before? And it took me like just a long time to figure out like, oh, it's it's because she's a woman and there like aren't all of these like invisible threads attached to our sentences, you know, like pulling at at like which direction they need to go in. I don't know if this is making any sense. No, totally. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, th- that's what the song, The Hunger really is about, about like, okay, so if I'm not, people don't like me if I'm ambitious, maybe I need to let go of that and try to just like, you know, be aloof and like be cool. And then realizing like, no, that's actually nothing's going to get done if I do that. Right. Yes. <laughs> and also that's not who you are. And, and it's, it's also not who I am. And it's like exhausting. And it's also sort of a form of manipulation. Yeah. I mess with you. Yeah. It's all, I mean, well, I sort of couched it as I tried it. I couched it in the, um, the like sort of new agey thing of just like letting go, you know, being like, okay, <laughs> I want all these things. I'm going to try to let go of them, mm-hmm. which like I, I think there's some goodness to that idea. I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not against that idea. In this context, it was not positive for me. Mm. All right, the hunger. The sun and the stars are just like you. Only Dark is the next song, and this song is very intensely lyrically and musically. I don't want to assume what the song is about, but uh, if you'd be willing to share, would love to know, ev- at least even in general, and, and then like where that intensity came from. Yeah, so this is the one song on the album that I wrote years ago. I wrote this years ago, and I wrote it for somebody else. Um, this was for a man who, um, he actually backed one of my Kickstarter campaigns in 2013, my, my first Kickstarter campaign. And the reward that he chose was like the high dollar reward where, you know, you give me, you pledge a thousand dollars towards this campaign and I will take one of your stories from your his from your personal history or your family history and turn it into a song for you. And, um, and he did. And when we met for lunch, he came down to Nashville from Minnesota. We met for lunch and he just told me his life story. And it was, it was, uh, it was really dark. It was really, um, you know, he, uh, his mother committed suicide when he was a, like a, a young boy. He and his brother were put into foster, the foster care system and bounced around and abused. And then he struggled with addiction. I mean, it just kept going and going. And uh, at the end of this story, I was like, listen, you know, Mark, I, I would love to write your, your story. And I would be, I'm, I'm honored that you would entrust me with this, but it's going to be a really sad song. And he said, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's where this one came from. Your singing is amazing on this song. Thank you. You sound like a blues powerhouse. Ah. How how did you stretch yourself vocally for this song? Were you just like, oh, I sing like that? No, yeah, no. I actually um, I, I wrote the song with this the melody that as it is on the album, and I really didn't feel comfortable or like I didn't feel like I like had the vocal power to do it until this record. Um, wow. So that yeah, I don't know. Just you know, hopefully I keep getting better over time and sort of grew into it maybe did your voice change at all after you had your baby during the pregnancy I, f- I think I was able to sing higher more comfortably and I think maybe still it was pretty funny I don't know hormones are crazy pushing on your abdomen yeah I don't know come on mom <laughs> <laughs> okay that's cold and lonely dark pull the floor to the pedal Push one more time Too close to settle With my friends We 
song good friends dedicated to is is this about the new jersey friends again no actually i mean well yeah they're they're in my mind but i really wrote this for my drummer yeah i mean you know it's just it's hard when you're when you're close with someone and they are going through a rough patch and you know i'm i'm a fixer cindy i like to fix problems Mm -hmm. i know that that's a typically male quality but um i (laughs) am very much a fixer and it's not always useful because you can't fix everybody's problems keep The next song is called We Made It, Um, a positive song about survival. We made it to the other side. We made it, but no, we tried. The dark stars are before the sun comes up and it's cold This song, you use the line, the darkest hours right before the sun comes up, which is, like, so true. Mm. But again, like, when you're in the middle of the shit, it's sometimes hard to believe that. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how you feel about that line when you're in the middle of a crisis versus how you feel after you've moved through it? Mm. Well, I've only been through one crisis since I wrote that song. Uh, (laughs) And I don't think... Yeah, I mean... So I would imagine after you wrote that line, you maybe were past the crisis. Mm -hmm. So you were probably like, that's so true. Like every, like hindsight is 20, 20. Uh uh But when you're in the crisis, you're like, it's going to be like, it's kind of like when we were talking about, this is where I live now. This is where I live now. This is life. Yeah. It's dark. Yeah. Um, and you just never think it's going to end. Yeah, no, I, I do think, um, no, I think I have evolved over time to be able to, to know in my brain, if not in my heart and skin and soul, that it's gonna, that that everything changes and, it, and it's gonna shift and get better, mm-hmm. um, even when something is is dark. And I, you know, I wrote about that on my on my 2015 record. It's the the, the first song is called um, "The Same Road," and I always introduce that song by just talking about how like you know when you go through something hard, you get to the other side of it and you think, oh okay, I had to go through that to get here. And then I, I think that, I think I am able to bring that forward and say, as I'm going through something difficult, be like, well, you know what, this is going to end. And like, when I end up on the other side of it, I'm going to understand like how this shaped me in a good way. And you say about this song, we made it. You say, I love my band. I love rocking out. I love the energy we create and give to the audience and they give it right back to us. So it's really important for me to have songs like We Made It on every project. Do you have like a descriptor, like the rocking out Nora Jane songs? Yeah, yeah, it's just like like a tune where we all rage. It's like a rage song. Do you intentionally write a rager? I, I make, uh, well, no, I don't intentionally, I can't like sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to write a rager. Like, and even when I wrote this, it wasn't a rager. It was like super lame when I wrote it. Like just that on the guitar, I was playing acoustic guitar and I was playing it in this like really square way, but I, I could like, I knew in my bones that it was a good song and that I just needed to change how I was playing my guitar. <laughs> but, um, in the, but I wasn't worried. Yeah, that's the thing. Like when, when I'm in the moment, when I'm writing something, I'm not going to worry about all that stuff. I'm just going to like get the song out, like mm. do whatever I need to do. I'm not going to, I like, postpone like I I, all judgment and like just I like pin it up to the ceiling and just like let myself move around down here without without hindering myself um because anything can be tweaked later you know yeah all right that's we made it Take all your time Take all your time 
I've been waiting already, so I really don't mind if you take all your time. The final song on the record is Take All Your Time. Was, that's uh, the secret song. You're telling them the secret. Okay, then there's that's the, it. That's the whole album. Yeah. <laughs> All right, do you want to talk about the secret yeah, song? Yeah, we can talk about okay. the secret song. So there is a secret song, shh, which I'm really interested to hear about the lyrical structure hmm. of that tune. Yeah, this is one that, like, I don't know if it makes a lot of sense. This was very flow for me. <laughs> this was just a flow song. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's about, like, for I wrote the song sort of to a future self of mine and to a past self of mine. Because it's really easy to get impatient, and when a person is impatient, it is really easy to take for granted everything that you have right now. Just trying to speak to to all the different selves and and acknowledge them, but also like bring them bring them in, rein them in. I've been waiting already, so I really don't mind if you take all your time. Great. Well, that's the record, and it is out now. It's everywhere. And before we let you go, so the last time you weren't here, we did not get a chance to do this because it hadn't wasn't doing it yet. It's mm. called the lightning round. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some fun questions. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, Nora Jane Struthers, what is the first song you learned on the guitar? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The first one I can think of is... Um, which is a really hard song, so it certainly wasn't the first one, is The bo- is the Boxer by Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, wow. What is your vocal register? In high school, I was a lyric soprano, and I sang opera, and right now I sing folk, and I sing really low. Love it. Um, what's your karaoke song? Ooh, um... Pearl Jam... Uh... Daughter. Dogs or cats? Dogs. <laughs> that face. I'm uh, allergic to cats. Oh. <laughs> what is your coffee order? It's so lame, Cindy. It's a decaf Americano. Something. Lame. Favorite U.S. city? Pass. Pass, okay. First album you bought with your own money? Maybe like Alanis Morissette. Me too. Sweet. Um, First concert? First big concert was... That's actually why I answered Alanis Morissette, because first big concert was Alanis Morissette. Nice. Uh, Dream collaboration? Ooh. Number one dream collaboration? Are there more? There's so many. Top three. Oh, gosh. I mean, I really want to sing with Willie Nelson and Iris Dement, and I'm counting that as one. Okay. Even though it's not one. That'd be amazing. This is too hard. Uh, something with Eddie Vedder or Tim O'Brien, who I actually know, but I still, he's my, he's my number one, Tim O'Brien. He's like folk. You know Tim O'Brien. Of you? course. Okay, yes. great. Okay. For when you have a baby, gender reveal or wait to find out? Oh, I mean... I could not wait. <laughs> I want. I wanted to wait, and I could I, not even. I mean, I, I barely waited until because I, I we I could have like called the fertility clinic and been like, "What is it?" You know, as soon as we found out we were pregnant. Really? Yeah, because they knew the gender of the embryo that oh. they transferred to me. But I didn't. I waited until the second trimester. Um, yeah. Star Trek or Star Wars? At this exact moment, I'm gonna say Trek, but really, I'm more steeped in wars. Last one. What is the most beautiful place you've ever visited? So many pretty places. I don't know. <laughs> First thing that pops into your head. Uh, there's this, this the river in the Shenandoah Valley. Nice. Yeah. Great. I ask that question because then I'll plan my trips for my life mm-hmm. based on people's questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nora Jane Struthers, you have done the lightning round. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks Cindy. Thanks for... Um, doing this experiment with me for the new record, which is out now, Bright Lights, Long Drives, First Words. Thank you for having me. Basic Folk This Week was produced by Adam Corey. Thank you, Adam. You are a rock star. Laura McCarthy, also producer on Basic Folk. Our business manager is Lindsay Myers. Alex Stanton of Townspeople does our music. I'm Cindy Howes. And I've been the person talking this entire time. It was me the whole time. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please share it with your friends if you enjoyed it. Post about it on your social medias. And we'll talk to you next week. Okay, bye. Bye.